morning. I'm in the library. Uh, November 16th, 2015. And I just am looking outside this beautiful view. Cars are going, everyone's just busy about their business for the day. And I think I'm gonna have devotion here because it's just I really just like this view and um, I just uh, had a few things in my heart this morning as I was in prayer for um, the man God has chosen for me, the godly man he showed him for me. And I, I've been thinking about some things lately and not lately, uh, this morning and it's um. I can almost instantly tell when someone's not for me. Instantly. Instantly. And um, this is how you do it. When, as soon as you talk, okay, let me just give some background of what I'm saying. I feel like um, we're living in a world where um, a lot of men expect perfection and they don't really love you they don't they might respect you they might respect what you do but they don't really love you as soon as you say one thing wrong about wrong about yourself or one thing that's like a flaw about yourself they're like huh what what you you don't know how to check the oil what you mean you you take the bus in in Brooklyn? Why do you take the bus? What you mean? And then they give you this face like, uh, so you mean you're not just perfect, and you're, and you're not um, this this doctor and this uh, Christian who has it all together? What you mean you make mistakes? What you mean you done that in your past? What? That's how you know the man is not for you. Any man who comes off that judgmental is totally not the one. Um, and that's why I was praying for the, you know, just this love and acceptance. And I, honestly, I don't really know how I'm going to come about it now. But I feel like I don't want to come off as trying to impress anyone by that stuff. Because I already know that the one God has for me will not be kept by those things about me. Not because, you know, oh, I don't know, superficial things like my career or um, the things they think, who they think I am and not who I really am. You know, a lot of guys are fascinated by me superficially but they don't really know me like oh you just this wonderful spiritual woman of God but you don't really know me you know they don't really know a thing about me and guys like that as soon as they find out what you you have to repent you mean you struggle in the flesh what you mean you mean you have to ask God to take that out of you you mean you're not this perfect angel what the, what is this? What does this look like? Like, I cannot, I cannot take um, guys who are superficial on that level. Like, what is this? Like, I'm walking with Christ, of course. You know, whatever he shows me in my life, you know, I, I empty it out my heart and I repent of it. And I, and I tell God, take it away from me and cleanse me from this. And I, I don't want it to be anything to come between me and you Christ you know and that's what the spiritual journey is a lot of people have this misconception oh so you you're not this angel of God that just oh, oh. and it's like and as soon as I even mentioned something like like a weakness in my life or what the Lord is working me on you know like oh yeah God really had to take that out of me because I was talking about overriding the Holy Spirit and I was like, yeah, I was really, you know, overriding the Holy Spirit, you know. 
sometimes I have like the Holy Spirit in my voice in my mind and then my flesh would override it and I would do what I want to do and so I'm asking God to please help me Lord to make your Holy Spirit stronger in me than my own desires that when your Holy Spirit talks I might be in subjection to your spirit and listen to your spirit rather than my flesh and then they're like and the guy's like what you mean you mean your flesh is stronger than in the Holy Spirit oh no I don't want anything to do with that you mean you don't got it all together I hate that oh my goodness and um the moment I see that it's just like er. in fact I think I'm coming I'm coming to a place where it's like I don't even want to impress you I don't I don't want to impress you I actually I want God to show me more <laughs> more of the things the negative things about me that can scare you away those are the things I want to say to a man I, I'm just thinking what can I say to scare you away from me because I don't want you to think I'm perfect. Is, is that why you're here? Because you think you're going to have like this perfect little someone to clean all your dishes and, and pray over you at night? I mean, I know I'm going to pray for my, I'm going to pray for the one God's chosen for me, for my husband, not a doubt. But a lot of these guys, like, they have this false conception of, what you're supposed to bring to the table <laughs> they are not the one they don't love to me that's not loving me that's having that's loving the idea of me there you go um, I find like a lot of a lot of guys like the idea the idea of me like oh wow that would be nice oh you're working on this oh I like that but they don't love you you for you you know that as soon as you say something that's negative or imperfect about yourself it's like mm -hmm. those are all the wrong guys that's not the one you ain't the one you ain't the one you can find the door right now because I know you ain't the one bye 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 and um, yeah so that's kind of just where I am and uh, what I wanted to say and um because I found myself in the past I was really very much um trying to impress I'd be like yeah you know especially if it's someone I like oh yeah I just I just want to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit wherever the Holy Spirit tells me to go you know it's uh, what, what I do and um yeah I've been to all these places and um this and this and that you know you try to give them your resume and tell them everything that's good about you but yet it doesn't even matter because if they're not the one the Holy Spirit has chosen it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna touch a single chord in his heart you know so it's like I don't want to ever do that again I don't ever want to say anything to impress any man Oh, because in my eyes you you who are you because you in my eyes you're someone who might have it all together or who I desire or who, who are you are you are you about me are you are you really for me you just like the idea of me you like what I bring to the table you, you like that I can talk to you and probably uh, enhance your spiritual life a lot but, but you don't you're not really for me all those guys can talk to the hand because I'm not about that and um, so I just kind of want to take a different approach when um, I never want to come across as the perfect one I think in the past I have, but now that I'm I'm being real, and I don't want anyone fake. Like I'm being real. Like this is me. Do you, do you really know me, or do you want me, or do you, do you like that idea of me? That's kind of where I am. 
So, um, um, yeah, that's it. I kind of feel like I, I have an attitude today. Like, I'm just mad. <laughs> Which I'm not. Oh, I feel like I am. Um, I just don't like that. And I just don't like that I've, I had done that to myself because sometimes when you're up in a place of desperation, what you want is validation. You want, you want to tell, want someone to say, wow, you know, and kind of validate you and like, wow, you've done all these things. Yeah, I validate you, but I feel like validation is something that comes in the Holy Spirit. Like, that man has to be validated before he, validate me before he even comes to me. He shouldn't, I shouldn't be giving him information to validate me. I should have already been validated in his mind by the Holy Spirit. And he shouldn't be coming to me for, you know, listening. I, I've countered that too much guys are coming to you listening to you to see hear what you have to say hear what you have to say to validate to um see if they like what they hear if, if you and guys like that when they listen to you to see if they like what they hear as soon as they he hear something they don't like they're like mm, I don't like that but you know what you should have if the one the who the one who is the one would have already went to the Holy Spirit to get that validation. Why are you coming to me? Why are you coming to me? Why are you coming to me to hear about my life? What did the Holy Spirit tell you about my life? Listen to Daphne Mateo. She says that. She goes, you know, well, what did the Holy Spirit reveal to you about me? Why are you coming to me to listen to everything I got to say? I have nothing good to tell you nothing good to tell you there's nothing good about this flesh nothing good to tell you i will not tell you anything good <laughs> tell you i don't i don't even know what bad i would say but i just know i have nothing good to tell you i want nothing good to tell you you tell me what the holy spirit told you don't come to me trying to listen for information to see do i like what i hear do I, you won't always like what you hear you won't always like what you hear, but where are you getting your validation from? What I say or from God? Mm. There you go. I didn't even know I was going to say all that, but that's why I like recording because um, it helps me process even more what I'm thinking when I get to record and, and get it out there and possibly even share it one day, you know. Um, because the Holy Spirit just like talking to me and it's like, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. You should have known from God. If you come to me, you won't always like what you hear. But if you already heard from God who I am, then you got it. You got it. And that's why I'm waiting on the Lord.